In this video, I want to cover creating a Firebase database app for Android. I'll start off by creating a Firebase project, and then I'll go off and get my Android fingerprint, debug fingerprint, and use that to create the Google Services.json file, which I will use in my Android Sandbox app with Firebase. And I want to test some data, so I'll set the database rules to public and push some data to the database. Okay, so to get going, I want to create a new project in Firebase. And I've already gone to the site, and I'll put that link below in the description. So create a new project. I'm going to call my project Dev Sandbox. Once I've created the project, I want to go get the Android fingerprint. Now that my project is created, I want to add the Firebase to my Android app. So I'll click on the Android icon, and it wants my package name. So I'm going to start off by filling in the package name, and that'll be com.gokat.sandbox. So that's unique to my project. And then I'm going to name mine dev, dev sandbox. So now I need to go off and get my Android fingerprint, which will be the SHA-1. And to do that, I've already got the guide loaded up, and I'll put the link down below in the description. And what I'm after is this key tool command, which will give back the SHA-1 or certificate fingerprint like this below. So I'm going to copy this and go to my terminal. I'll paste it into the terminal and hit enter. Well, it wants a pass password, and I've tried all my secret passwords, and to come to realize, it's actually Android, because it's the debug password, so Android. It gives me back the fingerprints, and I want the SHA-1. So I'm going to copy the SHA-1, and I don't want any spaces. Copy the SHA-1. Go, go back to my Firebase console, and I'm going to paste it in, and click Add App. So now it's set up my app, but I need to download the Google services.json, which has the secret information in it. And I'll add this to my project here in a moment. So before that, I'm going to get it ready by loading up the file manager. And I'll just keep that ready to go so I can drag and drop into the application that I'll create in Android Studio. So I'm going to click Continue. It has some directions here, but I'm going to go directly to the guide because it also has the dependencies I want. So I'm going to click Finish. So now I have the Dev Sandbox app in Firebase, or the Firebase project set up, and I have an app for my Android device or Android development ready to go. So the next step is go into Android Studio, and I want to cover creating a new Sandbox project for Firebase testing. So I'm going to start a new Android Studio project, and I'm going to name it My, My Firebase Sandbox. And I want to make sure the domain, the, the package name matched what I put in my Firebox. So it's com.gokat.sandbox. Well, it appends the, the project name here too, which may be ideal in your case. But in this case, I'm just create, keeping it simple. And I'm going to keep my project simple So, to show in this tutorial. So let's say I've created my sandbox, my Firebase sandbox. And I'm going to click Next. All right, I'm going to use the default settings, and I'm going to click Next. I'm going to use an empty activity, and I'm going to click Next. Main activity, I'm going to keep that the same. And Finish. Now the project will boot up and bootstrap and do the initial compile. So now that the project is built, you can see that the R has been generated, the type R. I can copy in and paste in Google, Google services.json file into my app. But to do this, I'm going to use the file manager. So I'm going to open it up by re revealing it in my finder. And if it's on Windows, it'll be slightly different depending on in what your environment context is. So here's the app directory. I know I need to put it in this app directory. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it over and paste it in. And it didn't go in the right directory, so let's move it back. Let's open up that directory. Just make sure it gets in there. Okay, let's go back and just verify Google Services is in the app directory. Okay, so we're ready to go. So I'm going to close this file manager, and I'm going to go to the Android Studio. And the next thing I want to talk about is the build scripts configuration for Firebase. But to do that, let's follow the guide. 
So I've got the guide already opened up and I'll put the link down below in the description of this video. So we have add Firebase to your Android project. I'm not gonna cover some of these small details. I'll leave that for you to find out and discover. But I know that I need to fulfill the SDK dependencies and library dependencies by adding that to the build scripts. So the first one I wanna do is add the SDK. So I'm gonna copy this class path and go to the build.gradle file. So I'm gonna go into Android Studio and it's the first one, build.gradle, which is for the entire project. You can tell because there's another class path already defined when the project is created. So I'm gonna add that to the lower part of this, this uh, section. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. The next step is to add the compile. I'm gonna add the first library, which is the Firebase core, to the compilation dependency, or the dependencies, which is used for compiling. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Android. And then that, that is in the build.gradle for the app. You can see this one's for the project and this one's for the app. So I'm gonna go down, here's some other compiles, so I know I'm in the right section. Or you can look at the dependencies. So I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna paste it again because I need the second dependency which will be for the database. Let's copy the database. All right, for the database, we'll paste that in. Okay, so the next step, there's one more and it's an apply plugin. Don't forget to add this at the bottom, apply plugin. So I'm gonna go back, add it to the bottom, just like it said, and we're ready to go. So now I'm gonna go up to the top right and sync now. If all works, it will complete without any errors. Sometimes you'll find that this won't complete. That means you have to update the SDKs or the back end of Android Studio so it'll fulfill the so that it'll correct the problem. And you can see that if you find an error, update the SDK manager. So it looks like we're all set, ready to go and test the database. So I'm gonna go into my main activity. Let's close out these other items. And let's load up an emulator in the meantime. We're gonna look at, let's say, we'll load up the Nexus 5X. These emulators I've already created and I have them ready to go. I won't talk about how to create those in this video. So I'm gonna load that up and we'll, the, the next step is to set up a Firebase. So let's, while well, that's loading, fire, Firebase, database.git instance.git reference. And then for the reference, I'm gonna say sandbox. Dot, and we'll show you what this means in a minute. And I'm gonna set value, just the arbitrary value of 100. So in the database, I'm gonna say for this object, I'm gonna set the value of it to 100. So this is gonna be like a property and a value. Okay, so I have the, the sandbox project up and running. And if I were to hit hot reload, it's gonna reload this project and try to persist this database, this value to this object in the database. But it won't because I'll show you how that works by looking at the database. Okay, so now we've set up the database. Let's go to the console and that's back where we created it. And we'll click on the, the database over here. Let's click on the database. Okay, so this is the root object. And I'm a, I want to persist data to this, to this tree of data. Well, it'll look like a tree in a minute. Actually, I'm gonna per persist one piece of data or one item and, and it, maybe it won't look like a tree until I do more videos. Okay, so to get going, uh, if I go up to the top, there's a rules tab and you can see that the default rules say I have to be authenticated. Auth means I have to be it, auth can't be null, so that means I have to be authenticated to persist. So I'm gonna set this to true. This is just like a JSON object. I'm gonna set this to true. So that means I, now it's set to public and it's gonna warn me when I actually uh, publish this. So now I've set to, that. this means I can persist any data, anybody in the world could persist data to this. And now this isn't safe, this, I'm just using this to test the database persistence from the Android setup. 
Once I've done with that, I'll revert back to auth does not equal null. Okay, so let's go to the Firebase Android Studio, and then we'll hot reload it again. And if all works well, we should see data in the database. So we'll go back to the data tab, and we'll just check to see what our... Okay, it did persist the data. I, do, I was so fast, I didn't see that. So let's just try one more data persistence. Let's copy it, and let's go... Uh, let's say 200, 300, and let's go sandbox one and two. Now these are different objects. I'm going to persist them. They're different property values. Or Okay, so let's watch it this time. Let's maybe collapse this a little bit. There it goes. It turns up green when the data was updated. So I have sandbox, sandbox one, and sandbox two. So let's just review quickly what we did to set up our Android Firebase database. Okay, so let's go to the Firebase console overview at the top left. We created a Firebase project, which we named, which I named Dev Sandbox. And then I created an app in this sandbox because I could have an app for the web, app for iOS, or app for my Java backend for App Engine. Then I'll go to the settings and check out the settings of my Android app. So you can see the names Dev Sandbox, Dev Sandbox. Here's my web key if I want to use that. Here's the SHA certificate fingerprint that I copied from the command from the terminal, which was here, which I ran the key store command. And I'll put that down below in the video description on how to run that. If I go back to the console, I am pretty much done with this. So the next step is that, that we did in Android Studio and we call, copy the Google services.json file to the app directory. Then we went to the build, the project build.gradle file and then we put the class path, Google services class path. Then we went to the app build.gradle and we added two compile or two dependencies which are for compile, for compiling and that was the Firebase Core and Firebase Database. Then at the very bottom, I added Google Services, the plugin Google Services. Then once I was done with that in the main activity, I added a couple different database persistent commands and to say get reference sandbox, which is the root value of that tree of objects. And then I set values. Okay, so this concludes the video for creating a Firebase Sandbox app. Watch for more videos on tips and tricks for Firebase database. Follow me for more tips and tricks, and I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.